Okay, welcome everybody to the uh, Committee of the Whole meeting for November the 12th, 2024. <clears throat> I'd like to acknowledge uh, that we're meeting on the traditional territory of our friends and neighbors uh, of the Dunaza, Dene, and Cree peoples of the Fort Nelson First Nation, as well as the Prophet River First Nation, as well as recognize our many Métis people who live and contribute uh, to our lives here in the North. In our region. <clears throat> Please be advised that tonight's meeting is available for the public to attend virtually and is being streamed and recorded. Are there any additions? Council? Staff? No? Thanks. Uh, is there any public who wishes to comment on this agenda? None online? None in the room? Okay. Everybody's okay with the agenda the way it is? Good. Okay. That brings us to. Um, <clears throat> Committee of the Whole Report Number 17, uh, 24, Tourism Projects Update. Ms. Vanderstein, welcome. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, so this report just comes to you after uh, the engagements and activities that we've been doing towards our tourism strategy and just giving you an update on how things went this past summer and fall with the engagements and some of the next steps that we're looking at coming forward to you before the end of the year in relation to the tourism uh, action committee. So it's just for information. Okay. That was pretty straightforward. Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Vanderstein? We're expecting some reports in the next couple of council meetings, right? Yeah. yeah. We're expecting um, Bannikin, who's the tourism consultancy that we've been working with to join us for the next council meeting to talk about some of the recommendations and potential changes that can be incorporated into the terms of reference for the um, tourism action committee. And, and then that'll be more of like a discussion with council to get your feedback. So it should be at the committee to the whole then, eh? yeah. rather than council meeting. Yeah. Yeah. That way we can spend some time plan. at it. Yeah. Okay. And then um, depending on what council's feedback is there, we'll bring the a potential updated revision to the terms of reference back on the 9th is the current plan, right. December 9th. And I see that the um, the appointees are, their terms are due or? At the end of this year. At the end of this year. Yeah. So is there an expectation that that will just carry forward? Has the committee been talking about it at all? Or are we looking for new people or? committee has been talking about it and um i think right now the expectation is is that depending on council's feedback in the next two um meetings that we would put out for recruitment and, um through december and into january and have new members appointed by council in january would be the thought okay okay good anybody else have any questions no okay then let's move on to the next. Thank you, Krista. <clears throat> let's talk about offered positions and delegations of authority bylaw updates. The riveting stuff. Sorry. No, <laughs> don't be. <laughs> it's right up there with the procedure bylaw. Yeah, it is. Um, so as the report describes, we've... Um, seen some um, changes in the organization. There's been a number of legislative changes um, put in place by the province since 2017. And um, we had over time <clears throat> been flagging um, potential revisions to our officer appointment and delegation of authority by law. We've kind of reached a point where we realized that um, depending on council's direction, the the scope of changes could be fairly material and not just editorial. So um, <clears throat> I've pulled things together there in a table. As council's aware, we did a bit of an interim solution for the fire inspector and fire investigator positions. So when the Fire Safety Act was um, adopted earlier this year, they did require um, local authorities, of which municipalities are one, to, to uh to appoint those folks. So we've done that by resolution. Um, but um, we should embed that within the bylaw once it's adopted. So there's a table there. I, I'm not sure if you'd like to walk through that and have a discussion. Maybe we can get a bit more direction from you 
as we go through, or if you want to just go at it round table, it's up to you. I'm good if we go through each one. Okay. Because I'm not really familiar with that entire bylaw. Okay. Sure. Believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things you're glad that it's in place. Yes. It in needs place. to be in place, but you don't often read it. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so maybe yeah, you can take us through the, the potential material changes you're looking at. Sure. The rest is just editorial, right? It's just little things here and there. Yeah. But these are the major <laughs> changes or potential yeah. changes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so currently, um, the officers for the municipality are a bit blended. Um, so what we've looked at, so provincial legislation requires three requires three statutory appointments um, for each municipality. So one is the finance officer, the corporate officer, and the chief administrative officer. They also have the ability to designate officers as they see um, required. So there's our, our current bylaw has a very long list of officers. It's almost every director in the organization, whether there's a statutory duty or not. <clears throat> so for clarity, it seemed to make sense that we separate out those statutory officers or other officers where there's a responsibility or an authority that's designated by a provincial act. So one example is the, um, the Federal Air, the Aeronautics Act, has certain responsibilities for those who manage airports and as a municipality that owns its own airport um there should be some of those um powers designated delegated sorry to the uh, airport manager around those regulations um right now we're a bit silent on that the positions embedded in a table but it's not designated formally <clears throat> um and then it's also the ability to differentiate between a must duty and a may duty. So the must duties are things like holding an annual tax sale, um, ensuring that um, minutes are legibly recorded. Things there's there's a lot of musts in the charter, and those aren't necessarily tied in our bylaw to that specific role. Um, the municipal officers are where you may delegate a power. So you may say. You may delegate certain powers to, um, let's say, officers being <clears throat> at the director level of purchasing under of a certain authority to a certain dollar authority, which you do you have already in your purchasing policy. But tying tying what we have together would be really useful. Um, maybe entering into contracts on behalf of the municipality, but you may want to reserve some contracts that you 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 uh, hold that power. Um, <clears throat> there's, um, the ability to provide for some flexibility in designating alternates for some of the officer positions. So our current bylaw says that there's alternates for those positions in the absence of the officer, but we know that sometimes an absence alone, um, there's other reasons why a person may be unable to perform their duties. Um, unable to unable or unwilling to perform their duties, they may not have the adequate training to perform the duties. Um, <clears throat> and so providing some flexibility in terms of who can be the alternate uh, delegated to that officer would be helpful. We, we lack that today. Um, so whether that's um, under the appointment of the CAO or if that's a power that council would like to reserve um, is up for discussion as well. Um, so an authorized designate, so it's not just um, a delegate as, let's say, someone's deputy, <clears throat> but an authorized de designate could also be someone within the organization that isn't naturally in the um, deputy position. So um, that could evolve over time with a reorg of the organization. Some organizations have... Um, one weird one is that council, uh, the charter gives councils the authority to close roads, or they may delegate that authority. So for some reason, at some point, council designated the corporate manager as the person to close roads. <laughs> but, but I feel very ill-equipped to be closing roads. So in my mind, it would make sense to authorize someone in like the public works department to be closing roads on behalf it's a it's a statutory responsibility of council they may delegate it in our case they have but i'm not sure it was delegated to the right person at the right time 
So it's just being able to respond to the needs with the um, staff and complement that you have. Um, the uh, right now our list um, we have so we have an annual list of personnel that are appointed by council resolution as well as the positions to the responsibilities. So the the bylaw our bylaw contains the list of <clears throat> officers by position and the responsibilities in that position, as well as annually council appoints the people to those positions. So what makes that challenging to maintain over time is that um, people change jobs, people leave the organization, new people come into the or organization. And so um, we've kind of fallen outside of the requirement and we do it annually, but we don't pass a resolution every time someone changes in their position. So just trying to consider if that's um, something reasonable to continue on with or to to delegate the appointment of the person to the position um, as a as a CAO responsibility, for example. Um, and then um, also the community charter um, allows council to um, allow for the reconsideration of a delegate's decision. So we don't have that currently in our bylaw, but that might be something that we want to include in the new bylaw. So if someone you've appointed has made a decision that um, a person impacted doesn't agree with, they have an appeal process. Right now we don't have that um, ability in our bylaw. And then um, just alignment of our of this bylaw with our other policies. So there's also other bylaws as I'm finding as we go through that we have about three different definitions of a bylaw enforcement officer and various different bylaws. So it would be nice to harmonize them so that we're pointing to one kind of universal definition um, and also the people appointed as a as having the powers of bylaw enforcement as well. Good. Are there any questions or comments for the corporate officer? So I have a few. <clears throat> if nobody else has any. Um, I agree with uh, 4.1, sort of the best practice around designating the statutory officers and the municipal officers. And if it's convoluted because we've got them all mixed up right now, we should, I, I think the new bylaw should separate them, make it very clear what the statutory duties are and what the municipal duty, officer's duties are. And the reason I say that is, is when we get later and you start talking about delegating <clears throat> uh, council's authority to manage that, to the CAO, you know, I might, depending on, on what the bylaw ends up looking like, I, I think I might be agreeable to the CAO looking after the municipal officers and their duties and appointments and, and having the flexibility for the CAO to deal with that. But when it comes to the statutory, I think I, my personal view is that if we delegate that to the CAO, you're starting to fetter council's re responsibility in designating those statutory officers and so i'd like to keep that separate and i you know i mean I'd, I'd like to hear what everybody else's thoughts are too but i i really don't think council should should give away that authority or designate they're not giving it away i guess you're designating that authority to the to the cao i, I think when it comes to the statutory officers we should be involved in the decision making around who it is and and what those uh because the charter is gives us that responsibility so I like to keep that, but but perhaps later when it comes to designating it to the CAO and the municipal officers, which mostly are dealing with day-to-day -day operations, right? That's an operational sort of a issue, and and you know the, the best practice out there seems to be that the CAO looks after day-to-day -day operations, right? So uh, of course there'd be something in there that says he's informing us that or he or she, whoever is the CEO, is informing us with respect to any changes that they're making. Uh, but depending on what the bylaw says, it, you know, I think it, we separate those. I'm, I'm fine with that. With respect to the alternates, I, th I think there needs to be a, a clear definition of when you use them, when the alternate can be used. Because you're right, it's not just in their absence. There could be a situation where they're refusing to do their job. And uh, 
or unwilling to do their job for whatever reason. And the municipality has to continue moving on. So there's, I see there's a potential interim period before we can act at a meeting. There's an interim period where the job still needs to be done or, you know, determination needs to be done, uh, needs to be made. That work has to carry, be carried out by somebody other than the appointed statutory or municipal officer. So it's easy if we delegate that to the, to the CAO for the municipal officers, it's a little more problematic if it's a statutory decision maker and officer. Uh, so I think we have to have a, a pretty clear definition around when the alternate uh, can start performing the work, uh, you know, because it can't just be, well, we don't like the way you're doing it. So we want to change it. Right. So it becomes difficult, right? If, because you could get a, you could get a difference of opinion between the CAO and, or the management team and the statutory decision maker that for one reason or another, we've already, we've given them that responsibility. And so if there's a, a difference of opinion, you don't want them just to switch the person out because they can, right? And so that's my fear. I don't know how you word it in the bylaw to, to protect against that, but, <clears throat> but uh, so I think a strong definition around the use of alternates would, would, uh, would be good. Um, that uh, what, um, I made a note here. I made several notes to myself. Now, reasons to use the alternate. Okay, talk about that. The annual list. <clears throat> it seems to me that if you get the list of responsibilities and and attached to the particular job function, because that's really where it should be. You know, it, it, you're right. You shouldn't be looking after roads. That should probably be with. So we need to get all of that squared away and, you know, make sure that that's at least in today's world that with, with the staff that we had and the people that we have now, we get that squared away first. And the, then it, if you get that list of, of jobs right and you get the alternate process right and you do it once after that it's, you keep that it's just the name you have to switch up right and uh and perhaps some duties so the annual doing it annually doesn't seem to me would be onerous if you if you got the process right in the first place you had a new person somebody's left they've quit or they've become ill or whatever and they and they can't do their job you've got the alternate process then really if you've already if you if you've got sort of why we are pointing them and sort of that list it's just really a name change that comes to council and it's pretty simple from there it's just that interim period and that's what you use your alternate for that's my thought on that and always you have to harmonize you know we should be harmonizing our policy whenever we do bring a, a new policy or bylaw forward it should harmonize with any of the others that we've done already. I mean, if we haven't, if we haven't, because there's a lot of policies and bylaws out there that haven't been reviewed for quite some time. So, I mean, you've got to at least be making sure that they're harmonizing with the newest ones that we've got. And then as we do or redo the older ones, we make them harmonize with the ones that we've completed already. So that's my thoughts. I don't know if that helps or not. <laughs> Councillor Souls, your thoughts, please. So, uh, given that we have an example of one uh, act of delegation that came about by provincial mandate or provincial, it was it mandate that had us uh, appoint a fire fire mark, a fire marshal yeah. as a, I mean, a, giving giving our fire uh, lead a specific uh, delegated authority under provincial rule. So, how how many other kind of centric or or specific type of officers would you see having appointments like this is a it's kind of a question because it's kind of in a sense like I certainly agree with what you say around the the CAO the CA most of what we are talking about we're trying to formalize something we're already doing and at the same time uh 
provide a lot more definition to it. And uh, as in the fact that you're now responsible for roads, that's kind of silly, except you think back, it makes me wonder when on council, there was someone who was really road oriented that was also this, <laughs> yes, that might, it might go back quite a ways. Yeah. Anyway, the, the point of that is that the, we have departments within our whole operation system. We have planning and we have public works and we have that. And, and so there's a, there's a limited number of appointments that I would see for a delegated authority, need for a delegated authority to, to operate on council's behalf. So is there, do we kind of have a ballpark of how many they would be or? So far there's five. So, so there's the three that I uh, talked about under the charter. I'm not, I'm talking about pieces of legislation that, um, pieces of legislation that we're accountable to that would, unless council wanted to perform the function themselves, that they, they would be well advised to delegate. So the community charter with the three statutory positions for managing the municipality, there's an approving officer, which is under the land titles act, yeah. um, airport manager in our case under the aeronautics act, and then the fire safety folks under the fire safety act. And then the rest of our um, staff, which do, they would have certain powers that they're not powers out of a, um, another piece of legislation, but they are powers of council that you, by some of the other policies have delegated, like purchasing, entering into contracts. But um, that's, those would be the municipal not, officers. Right, that's, yeah. that, that's fun. I was gonna make. That's yeah. the difference between a statutory yeah. appointment and a municipal appointment. Correct, right? yeah, yeah. So there's six-ish for the statutory appointments. And, yeah. and no, apparently I haven't seen it, but we were talking earlier, There's there's a graph in the back that lists them all is that there's a, there's a large schedule in our current bylaw yeah. yeah that goes through almost every exempt position and it's nearly their job description right so in my mind it would make sense to specify where it's an authority that you're delegating them but it doesn't the rest of their job functions are really irrelevant to this bylaw right and that's the that's where the, the trouble when you're embedding that level of description in a bylaw that's bound to change with the operational needs of the organization is that you're 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 going to be out of sync quickly so um just really being clear that this bylaw is where council has a authority that they are then delegating to a member of the the organization and whether that's required it's a must under legislation or it's a may um, and that's kind of where the maze or where there's an operational um, impact. And that's going to be the municipal officers. And then the statutory is, is a must. You must have a tax sale. You must perform certain functions yeah. under the Aeronautics Act, et cetera. Sorry, Councillor. Well, I didn't mean to jump in there, but I thought that that we, we need to make that distinction between the statutory officers, which I think you were asking about, and the municipal officers. Yeah. And the new bylaw would do that more succinctly than the existing bylaw. That's that's the point. Yeah. I'm good with that. Do you have anything else? Councilor Souls, any other discussion? Okay, thank you. Anybody else? No? So have you did we give you some direction or did we just model it up even more? I yeah, no, oh. that was no, yeah, that was okay. good. Yeah. Okay. So what's your plan next is to actually go write a new bylaw and then compare the give us a comparison? Yeah, so we've we've started writing, but we're also undertaking that kind of legislative review to make sure we're catching them all. <clears throat> um because ours isn't a good place to build from. So there's some really good examples like new um bylaws that have been enacted by other organizations um that serve as great best practices but we also you know you have to think about it in the local context and what we do mm -hmm. some of the things that we do given our uniqueness so um there may be other ones that come up that haven't been flagged but it's kind of uh we're in the process of writing it currently but also doing that more wholesome legislative review to make sure that we're um not missing anything um so yeah in terms of timing i mean we'd hope to have it back in november but it's looked like it's a bigger project than we 
it's not just a find and replace in our current bylaw. So it might take us a couple more meetings to get you a draft to have a look at. So that's the bigger picture. Is there anything that we need to deal with right away? Is there any officers that we need to put names to soon? Yes, absolutely. Yes. And we're coming up on that time of our annual appointments. So at the next meeting, you'll have your annual appointments because okay. we're still bound to follow our current bylaw. And that will take care of any yeah. gaps we've got right now. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Good. Okay. Well, if there's no other questions, now uh, there's no new business. Is there anybody, any public that would like to ask a question about what's happening in the gallery? Okay. Then we are adjourned. <laughs>